As humans, we like to think that we somehow have discovered everything there is to know about our planet. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In fact, there are entire parts of our oceans that remain undiscovered, and there's one place that is more of a mystery than any other. From the world's biggest shark to a legendary shipwreck, let's head underwater to see 20 mysterious things found in the Mariana Trench. <sighs> Number 20. Megalodon the Megalodon is one of science's most popular mysteries. We know that it existed, sure, and we know that Jason Statham fought it in a movie and somehow lived to tell the tale. But is it still out there? We have absolutely no idea. Which means you can believe it is and still have a 50-50 shot at being right. Not bad, eh? Sadly, modern science seems pretty insistent that the Megalodon is gone. Back in the day, this 60-foot shark was known to feed on just about any marine creature it encountered. Today, however, scientists have yet to bump into a giant 60-foot shark, and the fact that they've never seen a shark this big is proof enough that it's probably extinct. But of course, that doesn't satisfy everybody. Some people suggest that the Megalodon could simply be hiding, and where would you go to hide if you were a 60-foot shark looking for some privacy? The Mariana Trench, of course. The common theory says that the Megalodon is hiding out in the Mariana Trench because, of course, it's remote and it's the deepest part of the ocean. Of course, if the Meg actually lived here, half of the animal population would be devoured and it probably wouldn't be able to move anywhere. But hey, that's not our problem, right? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. USS Johnston just think about this for a weird, surreal fact. Many of Earth's shipwrecks haven't been found yet. Isn't that just weird? But of those that are known to be shipwrecked, one was wrecked on a much deeper level than any other. That ship is, you guessed it, the USS Johnston. In 1944, this US Navy destroyer found itself in a pretty intense battle in the Philippine Sea. The Johnston was taking on a large fleet of Japanese warships, and as typically happens when you take on a whole fleet of warships, it didn't win. In fact, the ship sank right to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and straight into the Mariana Trench. It wasn't until 2019 that the wreckage of the Johnston was officially discovered by a remotely operated vehicle some four miles below the surface. According to the experts who found it, the wreck was found so deep that there was little oxygen. However, the ship itself was surprisingly well preserved given the circumstances. While some of its new marine neighbors may have contaminated the wreck a little bit, most of the damage came from the initial battle that sank it. So all things considered, that's not too bad, eh? Just another day at the uh, shipwreck. Number 18. Plastic Bag we are all aware of the problems that plastic bags and other non-biodegradable products pose, but if you thought you could maybe escape all of that pollution in the most isolated part of the world, guess again, my friends, even here it's a very real problem. According to an official study, a plastic bag is now the deepest known piece of plastic trash in the world. Scientists had searched through the Deep Sea Debris Database, a collection of photos and videos taken taken over 30 years of diving, and discovered that, yeah, a bag was the deepest. A bag that had somehow made it 36,000 feet into the Mariana Trench. The biggest question you probably have is, how the heck did a plastic bag find its way here? As it turns out, most of the plastic found in the sea comes from a collection of rivers. People pollute the rivers, the bag washes up into the seas, and, well, you know where we go from there. The only problem is that it could take hundreds or maybe thousands of years for the plastic to fully break down if it ever does. When you think about just how many animals live in the Mariana Trench, including some that we've never met, that's a problem. Number 17. Ping Pong Tree Sponge 
Please stick with me as I try my best to explain what the heck this next thing is. In fact, let me try to give you the best and most concise description I have. It's a flesh-eating sponge that looks like a tree that looks like it's covered in ping pong balls. Does that... D does that clear anything up at all? The ping pong tree sponge, as it's now known, can reach up to 20 inches in height, and it's mostly known for its curious look. But when you stop to think about it, it should absolutely be known for its habit of eating flesh, because, well, that's weird. These odd little globules are covered in spicules, which are tiny structures that form a sponge's skeleton. And in the case of this sponge, those structures are hook-shaped, so any unfortunate creature that happens to touch them gets trapped. It's basically Velcro for animals. At that point, the sponge will start to consume the animal bit by bit, until the animal is completely murdered and eaten. Isn't nature just beautiful? You don't have to worry about meeting one of these terrifying Velcro creatures, though, because they live in the Mariana Trench, you'd probably be dead long before you encountered one. In fact, they tend to live about 8,860 feet deep, so unless you're part mermaid, you're good. Number 16. Baleen Whale Remains in these difficult pandemic times, when even going outside feels risky, live streams can help bring us some normality. We can travel the world from our couch, right? Or if you're feeling especially big brain, you can watch some live nature and witness animals devouring a carcass. What a charming way to spend a Wednesday. For several months, researchers from the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and the Ocean Exploration Trust had been on an adventure. Their mission was to document the deep-sea coral reefs and hydrothermal vents all over the Central Pacific. And that normally led them here, to the Mariana Trench, about 1.8 miles below the surface they happened to witness the carcass of a baleen whale, and it was being feasted on by many different kinds of animals. It's interesting. The scientists apparently spotted octopuses, eels, bone-eating worms, and scavenging fish feasting on the carcass down at the seabed. Obviously, the whale didn't have a good time in the trench, but this is the kind of luck that other animals live for. Finding a free meal out in the open ocean, that's like winning the lottery to them. All the benefits and absolutely none of the work. Wish I had a free meal. Number 15. Dumbo Octopus if you should expect to find anything in the Mariana Trench, it should probably be a rare animal species. After all, this is one of the most isolated parts of our planet. This is where the really, really shy animals hang out and hope to avoid the limelight. Ain't no Facebook here, friends. Dumbo octopuses are one of the rarest creatures on our planet, making their discovery even more fascinating. These animals live at depths of around 13,100 feet or deeper, the deepest living octopus on the planet. And that, of course, comes with some difficulties. Life at this depth is not easy. It's freezing and it comes without sunlight, but the Dumbo octopus is okay with that. These species have evolved some unique behaviors to live without vitamin D. They're also pretty smart, considering their environment. These octopuses are foraging predators. They eat the invertebrates that swim just above the seafloor. Probably a better idea than going after some kind of shark, right? Because they live in one of the the most isolated and hard-to-reach parts of the world, the Dumbo octopus is rarely caught by humans. Typically, when it is, it's caught in some kind of a fishing net. It is, however, pretty much unharmed by our species, which is an accomplishment when you think about it. We harm everybody, even our own species. It's kind of our brand. Number 14. Frilled Shark most sharks are more or less the same, biologically speaking. They have the rows of teeth, the big fin, the movie made about it, separate gills, but the frilled shark is actually unique in comparison. Because this shark doesn't have separate gills. Interesting, right? The frilled shark gets its name from its first pair of gills, which go all the way across its throat. Each pair are lined at the edges with a red fringe or frill. Back in the late 1800s, a German ichthyologist named Ludwig G.P. Dotterlein was teaching at Tokyo University. Just
just before he was due to return to Vienna. He happened to catch two specimens in the Tokyo Bay and brought them home to study. Decades later, these sharks would become known for preferring deep sea environments, specifically the Mariana Trench. If you were to somehow survive reaching the bottom of the trench, you'd probably find a whole ecosystem of frilled sharks just hanging out and having a good time. Of course, no human in the right mind would ever want to find a community of sharks. I mean, you're in their territory, it's like you're offering them an all-you-can-eat buffet of you. Number 13. Deep Sea Hatchetfish so, by now, we should know that the Mariana Trench is home to some of the most unique and curious animals on Earth. Also, some of the most dangerous and most shy. Where does the deep sea hatchet fish fit in? It's complicated. The deep sea hatchet fish is actually found all over the world. If there's water deep enough for them to be happy, you'll probably be able to find one of them. They're named, of course, for that unique hatchet like body shape, but I think we can all agree that's not the strangest thing about this fish. It's those eyes, right? The hatchet fish is known for its uniquely flat body and large tubular eyes that tend to point straight upwards, a tactic to help it find prey and notice lurking predators. After all, when you live in a deep sea environment, it's always good to just know that everybody and everything wants to kill you. Probably also good advice for life. It'll keep you out of trouble at least. The deep sea hatchet fish is kind of representative of all animals in the Mariana Trench. It's unique, a little weird, very rare, and something you don't really want to see in your dreams. So, uh, good luck sleeping at night, I guess. Number 12. Comb Jellies Obviously, we know that jellyfish live in waters all over the world, but we're not talking about your typical jellyfish. The comb jelly is a much, much smaller animal. Does that mean you shouldn't pee on yourself if you get stung? Hey man, I don't judge. The comb jelly is a transparent, jelly-like invertebrate with some bright color bands. They can be found all over the world, but they tend to thrive in especially deep environments. Like, you got it, the Mariana Trench. These jellies can be identified by their iridescent color bands, each made up of tiny hairs known as combs. Those bands divide the body into eight symmetrical sections. I don't quite know why, but let's just say it's to help artists paint them. I don't know, man. Comb jellies only grow to around four inches, making them significantly smaller than some of the more common species of jellyfish around the world. Like most animals that live in this environment, the comb jelly survives by preying on tiny planktonic organisms. If they can consume fish larvae, they're probably going to be pretty happy. And yeah, they they can eat up to 500 of these tiny things in an hour. That's not a bad record. If the Mariana Trench had a hot dog eating contest, I wouldn't bet on this guy, but I would be impressed with his efforts. Number 11. Benthocodon I'm going to try my best not to confuse you all with highly scientific words, but when it comes to the benthocodon, that's not exactly an easy thing to do. So let's just say that it's a jellyfish that likes to lurk in the deep sea. If that's enough for you, I have succeeded. But if you really want to know more, let's dig in. The benthocodon is a genus of hydrozones within the family Ropalone matidae. You still with me? There are actually only two known species of benthocodon, the benthocodon hyalinus and the benthocodon pedunculatus, but because they're tiny and red, they're often confused with many other similar animals. Okay, I think that's enough of the science words, even I kind of lost touch with who I am. The greatest voiceover artist since the last great voiceover artist. Uh, eh, yeah, sounds right to me. Interestingly enough, the benthocodon spends their entire lives living as plankton. They just never seem to age. They would be like Benjamin Button if that movie had just been about a guy who never ages until death. Actually, that's terrifying. Glad the movie wasn't about that. It's kind of my worst nightmare. Hard pass. Number 10. Black Sea Devil 
When you hear the word sea devil, it's easy to jump to conclusions. Is it a drunken sailor, and if so, what shall you do with them? Or is it some kind of evil demonic entity that's possessed a fish, like Aquaman? All of this is my way of saying the name is more interesting than the fish itself. I'm sorry. The Black Sea Devil is a small deep sea fish with only five known species. If you're so inclined, you can find them in tropical to temperate waters all over the world. But today we're hanging out in the Mariana Trench, and you can be dang sure they exist here too. The Black Sea Devils are named for their unique appearance, a kind of intimidatingly pitch black skin. And if you're interested in this, it's probably one of the most famous species of deep sea wildlife you'll find, and that's not an exaggeration. This guy has been on the cover of Time magazine. I defy anybody to name me any other fish that has ever achieved that. Oh, and Nemo doesn't count. The Black Sea Devil is one of those curious animals you'll never see. Even if you happen to be hanging in the Mariana Trench, even if you happen to be hanging in the Mariana Trench, you're in an environment with no daylight. Finding an animal with pitch black skin, it's like the time Waldo though went to the barber pole factory. Number 9. Barrel Eye Fish When your life revolves around exploring the deepest depths of the ocean, you have to expect that you'll find some truly terrifying things. The barrel eye, also known as the spook fish, is definitely one of the more unique and unsettling animals lurking in the deep. Some people, of course, won't find it too unsettling. In fact, they'll probably see this little guy as being cute. You see, barrel eyes are small deep sea fish that are named because of their, uh, optical uniqueness. They have barrel-shaped tubular eyes, directed upwards to detect potential prey animals. But before you go thinking that this is highly impractical, let me assure you they can also point their eyes forward. As to both worlds, right? Every species of barrel eye has this kind of telescopic eye, which is designed to collect more light than would otherwise be possible in this darkest of regions. But the eyes also have another benefit. The unique shape and biology of the barrel eye mean that the eyes are protected from the stinging cells of other animals, most notably siphonophores, a creature whose food is usually stolen. And yeah, it's the barrel eye that's doing the stealing. I mean, come on, you have to use those eyes creatively, right? Number 8. Snailfish Bet you didn't know there was such a thing as a snailfish, eh? Well, my friends, when you're hanging in the Mariana Trench, you're going to find an infinite amount of animals you would never have thought existed. That's just the world we live in. A team of 40 scientists from over 17 different nations decided to make an expedition, hoping that they would perhaps discover something new. While exploring one of the deepest parts of the world, they happened to discover three new species of snailfish, one of the most elusive creatures on the planet. These species were pink, blue, and purple, and they seemed to have a whole community and unique way of life far below the surface. And perhaps most surprisingly to these scientists, the fish don't conform whatsoever to the typical or stereotypical image of what a deep sea fish should look like. While most deep sea fish are frightening looking and have terrifying teeth, these things are small, translucent, and phenomenal predators. In fact, they're known to set highly orchestrated traps for their tiny unsuspecting prey. When their victims unknowingly wander into the trap, the snail gets to work. One thing you can't say about these animals is that they're slow. They get the job done, and they get it done fast. Gotta respect that. Number 7. Basozetis the common name of the Basso Zetis Robustus, and I really just want you to be mature about it, alright? Get the jokes out of your system early. We can all move on. Can you do that? Alright, let's do it. 
This, my friends, is the robust assfish. I can feel you laughing through the screen. The robust assfish is a species of cusk eel that lives in deep tropical and temperate waters worldwide. But this assfish has made his home in the deep and uncompromising depths of the Mariana Trench, where 3.6 miles below the surface and this cusk eel has managed to catch himself a delicious meal, a penny it. Man, these names just don't get any better, do they? Let's watch as this assfish devours the Pennyid. Yeah, I know how it sounds. When the little shrimpy boy gets a little too close, the assfish opens up and just straight up destroys it. This is pretty much life in the deep ocean. It's one of the most competitive and terrifying places anywhere on the planet, with every single animal out for itself. If you happen to get too close to that ass fish, he's gonna open you up and swallow you whole. There's just no way to talk about this fish without it sounding gross, is there? Number 6. The Mariana Sound I know some of you like a mystery. Well, my friends, if you want a mystery, I'll give you a mystery. Even in the Mariana Trench, there are bizarre things that happen that seem to defy all meaning. However, one of the most popular is the mysterious sound known as the Western Pacific Biotwang. Scientists sent a passive acoustic ocean glider into the trench. <coughs> A kind of autonomous robot designed to eavesdrop on whale conversations. Instead, they got this. A strange, unidentifiable animal call that has even experts totally baffled. The range is impressive, including sounds that span frequencies as low as 38 hertz and as high as 8,000. The sound has a lot in common with baleen whale calls, but marine biologists have highlighted how unusual it is to get new baleen whale calls. It would be like discovering a whole new dialect of English. It just doesn't tend to happen. But in this case, the call was recorded regularly in different seasons. Now scientists are just hoping that some somebody at some point will be able to back up their findings. However, that's unlikely. Some scientists believe that the unusual call came from a mink whale. So now we're in the middle of a science fight and who exactly is right? I don't know, but I'm interested to see this one play out. Number 5. The Super Giant Amphipod at the end of the 19th century, a scientist found something pretty dang impressive in the Madeira Abyssal Plain. According to his findings, he had managed to find the largest species of amphipod ever observed. Of course, saying you have the biggest is uh, usually a sign it's a lie, but not this time. In fact, the Alicella gigantea is still the largest amphipod species ever discovered, with some specimens reaching up to 13 inches long. Finding them, of course, is a problem. You would have to venture into intensely deep water, and humans are simply not built for that kind of environment. There are about 16 different factors that would kill us before we even got close to amphipod territory. Still, many specimens have been found all over the world, and scientists are still just as fascinated and excited to investigate. One particularly curious case saw one of the amphipods being found in the stomach of an albatross, although in that case the amphipod is believed to have been dead before it was eaten, or at least that's what they're choosing to believe. Either way, it's always an achievement to find the biggest species of anything, especially when that animal tends to live in environments that humans just never consider visiting. For a good reason. So sure, we'll let that old scientist guy have this one for now. Number 4. Goblin Shark We've covered the deep sea a lot on this channel, so I've seen a whole bunch of weird deep sea creatures in my time, and yet there's one thing that just freaks me out more than any other. I'm talking about, of course, the goblin shark, one of the freakiest fish in the world. The goblin shark is a rare species of deep sea shark, but you already knew that. This shark is the only living member of the family Mitsukorinidae, which dates back some 125 million years. It's for that reason 
that it's known as a living fossil. And in case you haven't already noticed this, it's absolutely terrifying. I haven't even mentioned the terrifying protruding jaws. It's like the thing from Alien evolved into some horrifying deep sea animal. And don't get fooled into thinking they're just some tiny curiosity. These sharks can grow between 10 and 13 feet long when adults, but some have been known to reach 20 feet. I don't think I have to do too much more explaining why they're so terrifying. I think you just need to take one look and you'll already have your answer. The goblin shark is one of the most undeniably freaky animals of the Mariana Trench, and you absolutely would not want to see this guy in the wild. That's for sure. Number 3. Leoplerodon in 1999, the BBC introduced much of the world to the Leoplerodon ferox. Their TV show Walking with Dinosaurs presented this creature as a huge 82-foot-long predator. Today, we know that's, uh, well, that's very much unrealistic and highly unlikely. But hey, it made for some great TV. Maybe. I haven't seen it. But you know who did? Scientists. According to them, it's pretty tricky to even attempt to estimate how big the Leoplorodon actually was, but there have been efforts to do so anyway. One paleontologist used the length of their skull to guess that the largest specimen would have been a little over 33 feet long. But that's definitely an outlier. According to him, these animals would have typically been 16 to 23 feet long, which is certainly more realistic. All I know is that a 23-foot-long creature in the Mariana Trench sounds like an animal you do not want to mess with. Although, if we're being honest, you could say that about about any animal in the Mariana Trench. Actually, I would just rather not find myself lost in this part of the world. Just put me on a beach and leave me there. I'll have a castaway experience. Anything but the weird underwater dinosaur fish. Number 2. Telescope Octopus there are a lot of species of octopus in our world. We know this. Some of them are nice, some of them are weird, some predict sporting outcomes, and some like to sing with the wiggles. But one of these octopi has these eyes, and that octopus is the telescope octopus. Sure, Henry the octopus has an underwater band and some shoes, but the telescope octopus has tubular eyes, the only species of octopus in the world to have this kind of benefit. Hence the name. Otherwise, the octopus isn't all that different from any other species. Except that it's transparent, almost colorless, and has eight arms the same length. But it's really all about the eyes for this guy. Those eyes have many, many benefits, being an evolutionary adaptation to living in such a difficult and uncompromising landscape. But they're mostly used to find food. Like other animals with tubular eyes, they come in handy for finding food more than anything else. However, they're also valuable when it comes to spotting potential predators. If you can see them coming before they see you, well, you may just be able to save your own life. Until next time, because here in the Mariana Trench, there's always a next time. Number 1. Zombie Worms let me say right off the bat that I know the name is misleading. You're expecting that zombie worms are just out there looking for flesh or brains or something. Turns out that's not the case whatsoever. Zombie worms have no interest in brains. They're dumb as hell. Okay, maybe not, but it's true that zombie worms actually don't care for brains. They're out for bones. In 2002, these 1 to 3 inch Ocetix worms were first discovered living inside the bones of a rotting gray whale 10,000 feet below the surface. Pretty gross, right? But since then, scientists have discovered over 26 species of Ocetix worms. That's a lot of zombies! But they don't actually eat the bones, they digest the fat within. You see, the worms secrete an acid that dissolves through the bones, releasing the fat and protein within. From there, they just kinda digest it somehow. And yes, that's as much detail as scientists have. Nobody actually knows how they're able to digest all of the minerals and goodness within. It seems like science just throws its hands in the air and says, I don't know, man, they just do it. For all we know, they come armed with a straw and a spoon. 
If you could survive a trip to the Mariana Trench, what would you most like to see? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.